Things are getting interesting in the luxury market. BMW is on fire right now. They have been, I don't even know how many quarters in a row they've been atop the US rankings, but Lexus is surging. And can they catch up to BMW? There's a really good chance we're gonna talk about in this video, but we're also gonna dive deeper into what's going on in the automotive segment. For example, BMW just had Snoop Dogg attend their dealer meeting. That means sales are gonna go through the roof. If, I, if there was like a Snoop edition of a BMW, I would go nuts over it. The dealers gotta look at their upcoming models and we're gonna talk about it and get excited over upcoming BMWs. I Right now I'm driving the i7 this week. Make sure to watch my review on it. It's like $157,000. It is crazy. I prefer to dry that over the Genesis G70 that I have in the driveway this week. Well, what? Yeah, of course I would. We'll also talk about rival of Lexus and BMW Mercedes. They're just not even competing anymore. And they're reporting their sales as wholesale. And we'll talk about why that's a big problem here in a little bit. But this is fresh off the press today, or it could have been late yesterday. Tesla to lay off more than 10% of employees globally as EV sales fall. We'll talk about this, and we'll also talk about the depreciating EVs. Yikes. Grab your snacks and drinks. It's going to be fun as we dive into the luxury market and the floundering EV market here in April of 2024. Lexus set a record for first quarter, all time with 78,000 units. They're only 6,000 units behind BMW. Mercedes, double asterisks here. They're only reporting wholesale. And it is not including their vans like the Sprinter and Metris either. And so when you only report wholesale, all that's saying is, hey, here are all the vehicles we made and we gave them to the dealers. It doesn't mean the dealers have sold them. In fact, we know the EQS model is like the longest and the EQS SUV. They sit on dealer lots longer than essentially any other vehicle on the market. All right. So Mercedes Benz here, we can't even like tally these numbers accurately anymore. And it doesn't honestly matter because they're no longer in the race for number one. They're a distant number three at this point behind Lexus and BMW. And Lexus, like I said, had a first quarter record. And if they keep this up, they could pass BMW by the end of the year in total sales. Will they be able to do it is anyone's guess. They are pacing after the first quarter to have a record year, probably like 350,000 units. And that could be BMW's total when it's all said and done. Time will tell, right? So make sure you're locked into the channel because I love covering luxury more than mass market sales. Feel like there's more bragging rights to be had instead of selling just an ass ton of pickup trucks and say, hey, I'm the number one retailer seller in, in, in the United States. It doesn't it doesn't get, get to me like it does luxury. And I used to sell luxury, right? Audi having issues with cars in the ports with illegal parts. That's why they're down on the quarter. Cadillac, not sure what the issue is, but they were down on the quarter. Volvo surging. Volvo looking one of the strongest brands up there with Lincoln and a Land Rover. And when I mean strongest, I mean having the best sales compared to last year. Jaguar was up 19%. Total luxury is only up 2%. Largely, you could say Lexus alone, if they were neutral, the luxury market would be down. All right. But their volume is doing really, really well right now. BMW is on the offensive right now. It's going to be really exciting. So BMW will be bringing 40 new and updated products to the market over the next five years. Dealers were shown in the Aria Resort, which is funny because that's the name of a Nissan vehicle. But anyways, the Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. BMW briefed dealers across the Americas on an early look. Uh, of 10 new and redesigned models coming in the pipeline. And with Snoop Dogg in attendance, not only that, performing with a little gin and juice, the product is just unreal, said one dealer. Companies like Tesla should be shaking in their boots because BMW's electric stuff is outrageous. BMW, yes, their EVs, they're the exception right now. BMW EVs are selling really fast. Lexus, RZ, it's a joke. Um, Mercedes bigger joke because their vehicles are so ugly and weird and no one wants an ugly EV. The i7 I have in my driveway, it looks just like the normal seven series. All right. It's hard for me to tell the difference, at least in the non-sport model. Like right now I have an M sport and you can get the M70, which has like 600 horsepower, whatever. It's ridiculous. The X drive 60 is already fast enough for me. 
Regardless, BMW's EVs look just like their non-EVs. And I think people like that. They don't want these weird, freaky-looking cars that look like spaceships or melting butter or whatever it is. So BMW is, uh, they, they made the right decision there. Lexus RZ, it has a lot of Lexus design styling elements to it, but to me, it only looks good at nighttime. And I don't think BMW has to worry about Tesla. Tesla is not even luxury anymore. Uh, well, I never consider them luxury, but now Automotive News does not consider them luxury. They call them mass market. And that's what I've always considered them. The demand for Tesla is just no longer there. Laying off 10% 10, 10 of employees is about 14,000 people because they employ about 140,000 uh, people as of December 2023 is minimum because it says more than. So we could see more than 14,000 people uh, get canned from Tesla. Uh, right now, it's down about 5%. Um, it had a little boost here, so it's it's just it's just not doing that well um, today. I'll just say that down five percent. It's only a matter of time, in my opinion, before Toyota has larger market cap than Tesla. So Tesla at one hundred and sixty six dollars a share, Toyota at two hundred forty four dollars a share. But market cap doesn't mean a whole lot depending on what you want to look at. But yeah, look at Toyota stock up nearly 2% today. And look what it's been doing uh, the past, let's say, six months. Look at this. Look at this rise. What about last year? It continues to blow up Toyota stock, crushing it. It actually now is the most valuable company ever in Japanese history. Uh, go figure, right? It took it took a while, but you know, here's Toyota Max. If we look back in the, the 80s, it was... It was trading at like $8 and now it's at $250 a share about. So pretty interesting that the flip that we had with Tesla and Toyota in terms of stock prices. Honda even up just a little bit. Only Isn't that crazy? Honda's stock price is only $36 and Toyota's is $244. It's quite interesting. All right, let's get back on topic here. Retailers saw redesigned X3 and X5 crossovers and the refreshed 2 Series Grand Coupe and a refreshed i7, which I'm driving right now, um, and next-gen electric sedan and crossover concepts. Well, those are probably the, the new Aklasa uh, vehicles. There's a sedan and crossover. The sedan looks great. The crossover looks absolutely terrible. Uh, hopefully, they're able to not bring that to the market the way it is. Anyways, BMW's fourth generation X3 will arrive in US stores this year and feature the brand's upsized signature kidney grill and slimmer LED lights. Ooh, uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't look ridiculous, the kidney grill on it, right? BMW is kind of hit or miss with it nowadays. The dealer said that because of the beefy makeover, the model doesn't look like a compact SUV anymore. Maybe that's a good thing. Meanwhile, the, X, the redesigned X5 wears a mean look, the headlights were pro probably the coolest thing I've seen, they said, referring to a new X-shape headlight assembly design that integrates the daytime running lights. That'll be, that'll be fun to see. But an X-shape over an eyeball, which headlights are kind of like the eyeballs, right, of the vehicle, typically means that the, the thing is dead. So hopefully it doesn't look like a dead car rolling around, like a dead emoji, right, with the crossed out eyes. Retailers also got to look at the Mini Ace Man, a BMW compact car brand plans to bring the electric crossover to the U.S. market. Surprise vehicle. BMW delivered a product surprise at the meeting in return of a wagon. Yes, the BMW M5 Touring is coming back. Well, it's coming to the United States. We have the RS6 Avant. If I remember correctly, I haven't reviewed one, but I see them here uh, where I live in South Florida. Beautiful luxury wagon. <laughs> they want to take a piece of pie from Audi for sure. Uh, the M5 Touring will generate more than 700 horsepower from its twin turbo V8 hybrid system and sport BMW's oversized kidney grill. The wagon is intended to help uh, elevate BMW's performance sub-brand in the U.S., which accounts for 40% of the global M vehicle sales. M sells well in the United States. Doesn't really surprise me. People have a need for speed here. BMW didn't say how many copies of the sports wagon will be allocated to the United States. No surprise. They're going to keep the volume low. They're going to gauge the interest and the demand for the new M5 Touring. Hell yes. The automaker aims to top last year's record sales of 362,000 sales. Uh, if we multiply 84,475 times four, uh, well, it doesn't look that impressive. 
but first quarters are always really slow. And then the second, third and fourth quarter, especially get really big with volume 362. I think the highest, the highest that Lexus ever got was around 355,000, but Lexus has a record first quarter. So they might be able to blow past that. It's going to be a race to the finish between BMW and Lexus. And I can't wait. Anyways, I keep coming back to that because it gets me excited. BMW supply is only 32 days. Only Toyota and Honda's day supply is less right now in the United States. BMW said to dealers that the electric future will be slow. And just like Toyota and Lexus, execs said a diversified powertrain strategy positions the brand well in the present market uncertainty. BMW will continue to invest in combustion engines, including the V8. A dealer said BMW plans to build what the consumers want, not what the government regulations dictate. And that's why like Toyota and BMW were able to team up on things like the Supra and the Z. They're able to team up on hydrogen fuel cell technology. They have a very similar philosophy. Give the customer what they want. Don't bend the knee to the government because the government is not the one selling the cars. The customer is the one buying the cars, listen to the customer. BMW believes in EVs, but it will be market driven, they said. And this comes right off the heels of Automotive News interview with Ted Ogawa, president of Toyota Motor North America, saying, we'll have to pay regulatory credits if the demand isn't there for EVs. We're gonna give the customer what they want. We're gonna to build to the customer's demand. For Inside EVs, we're gonna finish up with this fun little article. EVs have lost 28% 20, or more of their value. So let's start at the bottom, then work our way up. Bolt EV and Bolt EV. Well, on the used market, it makes sense because of this, the tax credit, 7,500 bucks immediately off the sticker price. That's gonna really help residual values. You also have uh, the used EV tax credit that you can get when buying these things. So it doesn't su surprise me that they have dropped uh, double digits here. Um, Mustang Mach-E down 30%. Keep in mind that Ford keeps reducing the prices on the Mach-E. That has not helped their cause at all. ID4, also a vehicle that's reduced prices, also the worst EV I've tested on the channel. doesn't mean it's a terrible car, but there's I mean, every EV I've tested, I'd rather have over the ID4. I haven't tested the new one with the updated motors and stuff, but yeah, it's not that it's an ugly vehicle. I just don't like how it drives at all. All right. Hyundai Ionic 5, one of the best EVs I've tested on the channel. Actually, here's the thing. I like the looks of the ID4 better than the Ionic 5. The Ionic 5 just does everything better than the, uh, the ID4. But yeah, this has been dropping in price too. So you could get a really good deal on one of the best EVs on the market, on the used market. EV6 as well. EV6 has better looks than the Ionic 5, but it's less roomy and the touch controls are, are not as intuitive as the Hyundai. So yeah, I'm gonna get that big panel roof on the Hyundai. Uh, my camera turned off, that's fine. Uh, Nissan Leaf depreciation, 45%. Well, it's the most outdated EV on the road, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, and we have EQS. Now, EQS SUV also has a very high depreciation. I'm surprised it wasn't on this list. Maybe maybe inside of EVs didn't wanna include two of the um, worst selling new EVs on the list from a Mercedes Benz. But anyways, EQS has lost 50% of its value since 2021. Um, yikes, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing, it offers good range and good power, but Mercedes buyers don't want a, a melting bar of soap or, or a, a river pebble as a car. That's kind of what it looks like. With that being said, uh, which of these EVs on this list would you have rather have the most? For me, I haven't test driven the Mach-E. I've driven in the back of one as a Uber and I liked it. But uh, yeah, Ionic 5 for me all the way. I'll see you guys in the comments below. Will Lexus keep or catch up to BMW? Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss it. Peace.